Hello, and in this video we're going to create shapes. Um, Illustrator, actually, if you hold down the button right here, rectangle, um, ellipse, star tool, flare, whatever else, it's all in this shapes uh, tool. You have to hold it down to be able to get these. Um, so a few things. So when you make a square, if or a rectangle, it doesn't matter. If you just let it go, it goes to whatever shape. But if when you draw it, if you hold on shift, it'll actually keep it a perfect square. Okay, that one's pretty easy. Um, I'm just going to leave that square on there for now. Um, yeah, nothing much to that one. When it comes to the rounded rectangle, though, um, when you're drawing it, if you actually push up or down as you're drawing it, it rounds the corners more or less. So that's pretty useful. Um, you could also just click it once on the surface, and you can set the width, height, and corner radius. So maybe you know you need only 30 on the corners, and you know what height you need. Then that's how that's created. Okay, and it's the same with the uh, rectangle tool. You can just click on it once. Okay, um, and now let's try the ellipse tool. Um, ellipse tool really, I mean, other than just holding shift to keep it a circle, there really isn't much to it. Um, again, the only thing is if you just click instead of click and drag, you can you can set the size to what you would like, um, which is useful. You'll notice this little guy right here that either locks the constraints or unlocks it meaning if you type in 100 up here it'll show 100 on the bottom and there's our little circle okay um, next thing gets a little more interesting here polygon tool um, when you're drawing your polygon tool yours will probably be a, um, a pentagram I'm, I'm not sure it's default I guess but if you press up and down it changes the amount of sides so you can go all the way to a triangle or all the way up to a circle really at least it'll look like a circle um, so let's say you just have an octagon, um, which is pretty cool. So you can just change the sizes by pushing up or down. And let's go to star tool. Um, kind of like it before, too. If you press up or down, you then get um, the amount of points. Um, another thing you do is you can just click once and just type in how many points you would like and also the size, which is useful. Um, not only that, but if you, while you're drawing it, if I press up or down, you can see that. But now if I hold down Alt, I'm sorry, Control, that'll also then, the, uh, well, it's kind of hard to explain. The, the inner points that you see, the ones that are closest to the center, they're not really moving. But as long as I'm holding down Control, I can actually move my mouse in. So maybe I don't want, I want the star to be a little fatter. Or maybe if I pull it out, I want it to be more skinny. You know, it's kind of up to you, or maybe I want inverted. So that's kind of how it works. So I'm just going to kind of leave this a little bit chunkier Star of David, I guess you'd say. Um, so that's how you do that. Okay. Um, let's kind of work with a Pathfinder tool. That's the other thing I want to show you today. So I'm just going to go ahead and erase all of these for now. Um, so let's say I do draw a star, and I want more sides. So I just press up. Okay. And I want it to be a little thinner looking. So I'm oops, sorry. Hold on, Control when I do that. Um, holding on control and it goes like that okay so let's say I want to make this look like you know Sun or something like that so if I turn off the uh, stroke for now and I'm gonna make this yellow um, that doesn't look very good <laughs> we can do a lot better than that um, so just real real simple demonstration if I use the ellipse tool over this for example hold down shift to make a perfect circle and right now this isn't aligned or anything well so I just highlight both of these I'm going to align horizontally and vertically and what I can do now is as long as my circle should be on top and if it is I could select both of them go to my pathfinder tool here and do minus front and that would give me give me my rays if for example I wanted to make sure I keep that sun um, or let's say uh, I want to make sure I have the same color I could you know copy and paste in front and I could take this circle and make it smaller. Now, if I want to keep it aligned, a little trick, you can hold down Alt and Shift, and it'll actually um, keep the uh, proportions correct, and it'll make it larger or smaller from the center. So I'm holding down Control and Shift, and I'm going to let go. Now this time I'm only going to grab the larger circle, hold down Shift, and, and also grab the uh, star. And again, I'm going to press the uh, minus front right there. And that looks a lot better. So that's one way you could do it. Um, I guess to make it look nice, you would add a gradient and whatever else. 
All right, so I'm going to leave that right up here. And what I should probably do is right click and group it. That way I can't, I, I, it's all together and I can't mess with it. Okay, um, and let's say I want to put in clouds. Actually, I was thinking more like a mustache. <laughs> um, I was thinking about showing you guys how to draw a Mario, but uh, that's a little more involved. So let's say I hold on shift and uh, let's go with black. All right, and or it's more of a dark gray. And if I copy a few of these, so control C, and then I could control V a few times. And I could, you know, just kind of put these where I would like. There. So let's say that's a mustache, but you only want part of it, right? So what I can do is I could draw an ellipse on top of this, kind of like that. Okay. I want to make that a different color so you can actually see it. All right, and uh, you know maybe I'd want to rotate this a little bit, move it down. And again, uh, these front ends and back. If I try to highlight these now and go to Pathfinder and try to use one of these, it's not going to work the way I want. So what I need to do is hold down Shift, select all of these circles instead, and I'm going to group them together. That way, if I'm using it and then I press that minus, oops, not what I want. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't have grouped it. What am I saying? Ungroup that. I'm sorry. Use merge, okay, or unite. It's the top one here. And then that way I can then do my minus, and that way I get that cut out, okay? So that's kind of like a mustache, I guess you would say. Um, another example would be let's say you're, let's say you want to put a mouth under this. And what I could do is I'm going to use my ellipse tool. Oops. And let's say I want to go about like that, okay? And um, I only want to use part of it. So again, I could use a rectangle here and just kind of cut right through here. I'm going to say I don't want this on top. Let's make that a different color so you can see it. And um, yeah, so I could just, oop, let me do that. I'm going to use my selection tool. I could grab both of these and do minus, and that way I only have my bottom part. So let's say that's the mouth there. And again, if I didn't really like that, I could use my direct select and I could grab individual points and you know I could shift these top ones out however I want. Um, it's up to you. And uh, let's say I want like kind of his mouth to be showing, so I'm going to grab my rectangle tool here. And I could go from the anchor point out, um, but let's say like it's not perfect. It's not like quite round the same way. You know I could go in here and just uh, you know go farther out, and you know make this white for example. And these are intersecting. So let's say I select both of these here and I go to uh, Pathfinder Divide and then right now if I click on it they're actually grouped together. I'm going to ungroup them. It does it automatically when you use that tool and I can click these individual pieces and delete them on the outside and then uh, right now it's not really showing is it? Um, I want this white to show. Let's make it gray so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Um, what I can do though is I could put a black stroke on this. I'm just going to put a black stroke on it. That way you, you can see it if it was white. Let's change that to white so you can see it. Um, but the white stroke's actually a little wider. So I'm going to up that stroke to three. Oops. And I'm going to do it for the bottom part as well. So let's up that stroke to three. And that way it looks like that instead. And it actually looks kind of weird having it since I messed with the uh, outside there. But that's kind of just the way it is, I guess. And then I could, uh, you know, rotate this. Oops. Why aren't you rotating? There it is. Oops. Ah! And I could group those together to make sure that doesn't happen. Rotate that a little bit. And uh, now let's say I wanted to make it look like it was uh, a mouth inside there. Again, I'm going to hold Shift, Alt, Oops, sorry, should copy it first. Control C, Control F to paste in front. I'm going to do Shift Alt and make this one a little smaller. Alright, and what I could do there is then I could do black, and that could be its tongue. Um, now that doesn't really look quite right, so really you should use a gradient. I don't want to get into all that right now, but you know, just grab a gradient and drop those colors down in there. Um, and you want to make sure you go at like, I'm going to go like at 10. 10 degree angle. I'm sorry, no, like a 100 degree angle. Make sure it's up and down. 
And then maybe I'd grab like a darker red in there too. Um, get rid of that white. And I could drop it down to redder. Maybe this should be a little bit lighter. I could always use my color picker and go up here. Whoa. Try my slider over a little bit. But uh, anyways, um, so that's just a, uh, you can kind of see this kind of looks like Mario a little bit. You know, it's got the mustache and the mouth. Um, I'd probably want to rotate this around and stick it closer. You know, if you want a quick to put in his nose, you know, you just grab the ellipse tool and, you know, you want to do a fleshy color um, gradient. So if I did this, I would double click on this guy and I'd use my color picker, kind of get a fleshy color in there. And then my other colors should probably be pretty much white. All right, and you'd want to do a radial. Okay. And you'd want to do the opposite of that. You'd want the darker color on the right side. And probably should use my uh, gradient tool and go from a different direction there. Get a little shine to it. There you go. You can kind of see it's coming together. But uh, that's how you use <laughs> these different shapes and then also how to use some of the Pathfinder. Um, just practice with it. There's a lot of different ones in there. If you just hold your mouse over it, they say what they do. So that should help you out. Um, yeah, so good luck. Enjoy.